Okay, hi, welcome to the channel. Uh, I know this channel is mainly focused around my business and kind of promoting it for myself and talking about marketing and stuff and funnels and pay traffic and all that kind of stuff. But I'm also going to get a few of my friends and a few people in business space in Ireland to kind of jump on and have a conversation with them, especially over the next eight weeks. I have a few cool people planned. But uh, today I'm here with Thomas Arnold, What's who up? is a very good friend of mine. Um, Thomas is 21. He's essentially a fucking YouTube star here in Ireland. He has 12,000 followers on it or subscribers on it. Um, he is a student in UCD studying commerce, but he's currently on his internship in the biggest tech company in the world, Microsoft, uh, and also he does his fucking uh, videography on the side for corporate brands and events. So this guy, if you want to talk business, uh, this is the guy to talk to, um, especially social media, digital marketing, all that good stuff. So, Thomas, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure, Leighton. Absolutely, <laughs> gents. Uh, so first off, I just want to ask you, like, um, you've obviously been at YouTube for like a fucking long, long time, and by the way, you're a local on the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, you've been at YouTube for a long fucking time, man, and you've like the following kind of really kicked in the last six months. Would you agree? Uh, last year. Yeah, I'd definitely yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. So just talk a little bit about like consistency and like how how you got there, man. Yeah. Um, Collaborations and stuff. What, wait, what, what, what how to was? work for you? I just reached into your crotch. Um, yeah, like YouTube is a bit of a weird game. Everybody has a different story as to how they've done well out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you I off making your, your college box. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was how I was consistent at the beginning. So, my route, so I'm at 12K now. I probably stayed around the 1 to, one to 3K throughout UCD. And that was putting out, like... That, how long was that process? It was about a year, year and yeah, a half. Well, so, that is still pretty good growth, in fairness. Yeah, well, like... Yeah, yes I know. I think when stuff really started to kick off was when I started to try and make viral videos. Okay, cool. Um, and... It, I just switched my mentality from like, I need to put up a certain amount of videos a week to every video I'm putting out, let's try and make it something that could pop. Um, so that meant, meant just being more strategic when it came to what's trending at the time, but mainly when it comes to title and thumbnail and a video that people really wanna watch. Cause like the f sort of formula for viral success on YouTube is um, high click through rate. Mm -hmm. So out of the 100 people who will see your video, how many of them can you get to click it? So at the moment, say 14% would be like a very good percentage. Mm -hmm. And then out of that, how many, how long do people stay? So there's no point people clicking into it and then they run away five seconds later. If you can combine a lot of people clicking into a video with them staying for a long time, then that means YouTube can sell this person way more ads and they can make more money yeah, of course, of course. and they want to recommend your video. So yeah, sure. my whole strategy is around looking at what's trending at the moment, getting something that's really clickable so, uh, and how to keep them. Yeah, yeah. Every video will have probably two, three hours of like just oh, yeah, no way. prep so of it. So would you just go look at other people that are in your space and just kind of see what their titles are? Yeah, or like at the moment I'm trying to build out my own niche. So I'm trying yeah, to yeah, do... Yeah, you're really touching into the whole like Irish niche. Yeah, or like I spent a day as, that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but if people can put out like relatable content, that's Absolutely. very, very shareable. Like Jeff Mann is a great example of that and Cal is as well. So if you have that personality, I'd definitely try and tap into that. Like. Oh, that's sick, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so how much, in terms of your YouTube success, like what would you like uh, attribute to? Like what, what do you think did it, like the titles? The Krispy Kreme video. Oh yeah, for, <laughs> for real, yeah. Wait, how many, oh yeah, just because I was in it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny, man. That, like, yeah, did you, yeah. yeah. That one of your favorite ones? Um, it was a very funny one. Like it was very on the moment. I decided that morning, and uh, you and Matt decided to come. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. It up the next that day. Was day. So that was uh, that was just a question of acting quick when I thought something could pop. Like there were certain things that fell into my favor. For example, when they shut it down, it used to be twenty four hours. There was a big media storm two days after. Um, after we had made that because um, so we we were there on the saturday i posted it on the sunday or the monday mm -hmm. and then on the tuesday uh, or wednesday it was all over the internet on, in ireland anyway because um it had to be shut down for 24 hours because people were trying to bust in at like midnight mm -hmm. so crazy, there was a lot of search traffic uh, yeah, so and i became just, the first you got off the back end of that. yeah that's pretty sick man. so that's how it popped from like 10k to like 50k in a week so that's sick man yeah Crazy. But like I'm always trying to iterate and try and I definitely haven't cracked it. I think 12k is good and like I'm happy with that. But mm -hmm. to get to 100k, which would be the next big milestone, it's going to require a lot more iterating and probably a lot more content. Like I'm not yeah, putting out yeah. as much as I could. So um, in terms I, of getting the following, like how much would you um, like? How much do you think of it? It relies more on consistency. Um, do you think it's more consistent, like, you know the way the whole kind of working harder versus working smarter? Do you think, like, if you get away with, like, putting in good titles and good videos, you can get away with being less consistent with it? Uh, yeah, if you have talent, like, yeah, I, I, I see so. someone as, like, say, Jaffa Man, he just has that X factor. 
he's just really really funny and really really yeah. relatable uh, he's a bit of a meme like if you have that talent like go for it i think carl arnold has that a bit as well like all of his videos seem to be a bit of a even though he doesn't post consistently whatsoever they're really high quality and quality to me means something that people will binge mm -hmm. like if they yeah, go just watch like 20 of your videos yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah if yeah, they go yeah. into your channel and they watch yeah. 10 videos that's a big success i suppose that's just coming out coming down to like you just being like you i suppose and then people kind of following for you yeah 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 but you like you you is like it can be a variety of things so it could be in Jaffman's case, he's just a meme. He's funny. He's just Matt Diavella, he's like way more philosophical. Like that, minimalistic guy. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like cool a philosophy like guy. So I think everybody has a bit of a niche. Um, some people have raw personality, like Glenn Gillen. I think he's just he's a, like I still watch him. Like he's a pure. Yeah. I love his personality, he guy. So he's doing well, now, isn't he? really well yeah. well he's actually stagnated a little bit recently i think yeah, he's he, well no, you're fine like i <laughs> he's uh he's hit like 55k or something yeah, he hasn't yeah. done as many of these he did a lot of food challenges last summer that did yeah. really well but he's been like around the same view camp for a while so. it's just kind of slowed down i think has it yeah like yeah, it it, kind of summer down. 2017 it was really popping not anymore it was fucking everything like everyone was doing fitness videos yeah uh, um not anymore though even raw but it's even he's not doing much fitness it's all travel now isn't it yeah yeah it actually it's more travel that's sick yeah it's fair weird. um all right so cool here so ucd how'd you find that yeah grand uh, <laughs> yeah there's plenty of times i thought of dropping out yeah, um cool. I don't know, man. Well, I was going to say to you was like, so obviously you study commerce and yeah. like you're extremely entrepreneurial. You do all your freelance work and you're banging out all the client reaching stuff. I'm just curious, like in terms of studying UCD, how much did that affect your business mindset? Where did your business mindset come from? Uh, do you I think it, no, don't you know. know. Do you think of it more just as a passion project or do you obviously think of it as a business? In terms of your, your freelance or college? Well, freelance, your video work and stuff. Yeah, I see freelance definitely as a business. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I don't think I've learned a huge amount from the coursework in UCD, but... Yeah. It was a good place to vlog. It was course, a good, yeah, pla fair, yeah. good place to network yeah. um, and good place to like certain things like I wouldn't have got the opportunity to work at Microsoft, which is like yeah, working in an experience of a corporate environment. Mm -hmm. I had a job last year in college, which allowed me to save up a lot of money to buy like a lot of camera gear. So um, I wouldn't have got that if I wasn't in the college. So um, there's like I learned a lot of things and like made friends as well, which is really important because I think entrepreneurial stuff can be, can be very lonely at times, so yeah, it's um it's good to have like a friend group as well. Yeah, but digging into like the mindset behind it, do you think that UCD and your lecturers were a big part of like your whole? You know, I'm going to start reaching out to people and offering video services and stuff. Or like, where did that whole like what inspired you to start reaching out to people and offering vi video services? Um, yeah, so it was probably my like I get my mentality probably from my mum because yeah, yeah. she was. She like didn't get enough points to do a county at college, oh, so she did a county at night. She worked two jobs. She was like working since she was fourteen. So mm -hmm. that whole work side came from her. And mm -hmm. um, like I haven't done up until recently, I haven't really done a lot of out outbound. Is that the word? I haven't yeah, done a lot of outreach. I mean, I think due to like you just being popular around and you do really good work for people, people are coming to you for video services. Yeah, like people are coming to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. that's that's it really like it's i've always been a big proponent of doing a really good job for your current customer because yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll pass uh, you off, on yeah off the back. have you ever had over subscribe now uh at the moment i'm like at limit for may yeah, yeah, but yeah. i've never been booked out for more than like a month yeah, so sick, it's um it's good to be booked out though yeah, cool, man. Yeah. And, t and in terms of like when you're doing your freelance how important is it to like come back in and get new equipment Oh with, man, with everything, them, yeah. everything. Like with a lot of your like your profits come back into just getting new equipment. Yeah, man. Just keep yeah. on improving. Yeah, definitely. Every six months, just have the best equipment possible. Yeah, well, like not just the best equipment, but I think if you're a freelancer, particularly in my game, you have to be thinking like, what's the package you bring? So yeah, in sick. terms of your revenue streams, obviously you have certain industries that need stuff. So you have promo videos, you have events, you have weddings. But in terms of getting jobs, if you want to, like a lot of jobs will come secondhand from other videographers mm -hmm. and half the time you're looking at, okay, I need a guy with a certain mic, a 4K camera, certain lighting gear, can he drive? So you just have to have a certain skill set for people to hire you. Um, and that's a good way of getting secondhand jobs mm -hmm. that just require you to shoot. So I'm always looking at what's a package that can give a customer an end-to-end -end solution. So not me having to like rent shit. How can I make sure I have good sound for them good lighting yeah. build a set if they yeah, need it so, yeah. 4k video give them anything that they need yeah, so cool. do you like doing the corporate events uh i love events corporate branding what what, what like what, what's your favorite space to be in like uh i love you like the, you like the startup world don't you i do like the startup yeah, world yeah cool. i like i like events probably the most yeah, yeah they're the cool. most fun to do yeah uh, i also love just 
I just some stuff, and this is not industry specific. I just love people who are really passionate about yeah, sick, yeah. making videos because anybody who does my game, you'd know that you're going to get some people emailing you being like, "What's your best race?" Mm -hmm. And that's not the people you want to deal with because they're just basing stuff on price yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. i really should want, focus more on value yeah i yeah. want to work with people who like genuinely believe in the value of video and genuinely want to transform their business mm -hmm. and um that's they're the funnest customers to work for uh, and i'm trying to move in 2019 i'm trying to move moving more towards not just taking every job that comes my way but um really trying to work with people who really like working with me like, mm. so when you started doing your own stuff, would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Uh, I'm definitely an introvert. Yeah, yeah. definitely. No way. Serious. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And cool. I'm like, so like, when, like, and obviously, like anyone like that's in business knows that like discussing price and stuff can be relatively quite like you can awkward. get under pressure and stuff and awkward. Yeah. yeah so yeah. how do you handle that? Um. So like initially, when I was dealing with it, I would take whatever I got. Then it. Was yeah, yeah. Of course. To... I think everybody. I think every everybody goes through that stage where like whatever the like once they say a number, like yeah, that's fine, I'll do it. Like when you're yeah, starting yeah, off yeah. and shit. Yeah, of course. And then it'll move because to... you just want to get started. Yeah, you yeah. just want to get money. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, true, yeah. And then you're like hourly rates, and then I stopped doing hourly rates, and I did half day and day rates. Yeah, I think. And that's where I'm at at the moment. But if if someone comes to me with a price, if they're asking for price straight away, that's never how I like to move the conversation it's always more like what do you want of course, yeah, of to course. get from me what what value do you want how big is this project what's your budget for it and how can we use that spend as efficiently as possible mm -hmm. i think a good tip for anybody doing work and this probably goes for like because we're both in the marketing world yeah. it's looking at people and saying like you don't want a one and done job with a video in mm -hmm. my opinion yeah, i want to give you something that you can repurpose then and get your you know in-house fella to mm -hmm. chop up and you've got more shit to yeah. like post um and i, I want to look at this as a relationship of like what's your what's your three months what's your six month plan yeah. there's always going to be people who have their big events in may or something and they're showcasing stuff to clients and they need it for that but you know what's your long-term marketing plan and that doesn't have to be super expensive i don't think mm -hmm. i think you know you still got to pay people properly but you can use your spend efficiently so that you're you're having good ROI on what you've put in. Yeah, that's really sick. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to talk to someone now, what would you say about lads, maybe even younger than us, wanting to get into the space and, and offering to do it for free? Like yeah. some people are like, no, don't do it for free. Don't undersell yourself. Or I, I personally think that doing free work for like your first two or three projects is essential just to get them testimonials in and get your experience in, especially if you don't, even, if you never even worked projects. Yeah. What do you think? Like in a practical sense, like if, if someone comes to you for a video, they're going to ask for what you've done before. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, having if you want to offer anything, anyone's going to be like, okay, cool. If you want to do this for me, like, who have you done before? Before, yeah, yeah, of course. So, you do need to show them something. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. that's one thing. Okay, cool. But so, like, it might not have to. Okay, cool. So, in terms of video, you might be able to put out a cool uh, collage of like a, a skill trip or something that you went on and just show your video skills through that. It might not have to be corporate. Is that what you're going to say? Well, like, I'll give an example, right? So, somebody comes to me last week and they're like, uh, we have a big event coming up. So, first of all, I'm like, okay, this is really important to them. Mm -hmm. They've got my contact through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So, they know they can, like, there's some meta rapport built up. But their event is really big and they ask me, what have I done before? So, I send them on three videos of different events that I've done. And if I didn't have that previous specific experience so if i was to send them like a music video or something else that mm -hmm. i don't think that would have given them what they wanted okay of course yeah. you have to be like no no he's dealt with my specific issue before and he can give me i like exactly, the yeah. solution he's come up with so yeah. uh, to begin with definitely do a, a few things for free because you've got nothing yeah, yeah. um but i still do stuff for free if i think the brand is it's like a big enough brand or i feel like i can you know hustle my way through that connection mm -hmm. to get to somebody else but there is a fine line between i think you just need to use your head and look think is this person trying to fuck me over by doing it for free or are they gonna hook me up with somebody else yeah, okay, or okay. like nothing is a and this is a big problem with people who just hear the words don't do stuff for free oh. like everything is a trade so i'm shooting an event yeah. this friday it's a reduced rate, but I'm getting two leads. It might not it. be a monetary return, but it could be something else even much bigger than like long term always. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, but like so do you always have that long term mentality when you're talking to somebody? Well, I'm trying my best. Like, de yeah. don't fuck anyone over in this country because it's the smallest yeah, it's, country. It is in the fucking world. small, isn't it? You, you, le you learn that, like. Yeah. So, um, make sure you're if you're in a client service business, make sure you're being really good to your clients. Make sure that you're 
being really valuable to them like mm-hmm. or maybe sending them a funny video from now and again or um get sending them something that you think is valuable to them because you know like from my experience i've been doing freelance now for three years i guess i've gotten videos this year that were relationships that started in 2017 yeah, that's so you know your whole revenue is based around a good customer base it doesn't need to be a huge customer base it just needs to be one that trusts you and you give them a good product and they'll come back it might not be in three months it might not be in six months but it could be in three years and it could be a massive project so um my biggest pro like my biggest client that i got this year which is the biggest amount i've ever gotten for a video job was based on a guy who i met in 2016 so that's bad to show um, you like. and like we're young like we're only starting off yeah, but yeah, yeah i presume as we get older as well and our friends start to go into like marketing positions and mm-hmm. they start yeah, to oh yeah that you, you'll see it, it'll come full it'll come full circle yeah especially when you, like when you're talking about your friends in college and stuff like that all go into like marketing positions and executives and stuff and you know you might be able to do a few favors for them yeah exactly That's and it's sick. like again it's a relationship it's none yeah, of this because when you're growing up like i think it's like how can i weasel my way to get the money but uh everything is a give and take like yeah, so of um, course, yeah, yeah always have that mentality yeah. um just touching on that um like obviously a lot of the people that you be work that doing work for be a lot older than you like how much do you think age is a factor when you're trying to like be essentially an entrepreneur and try to do your own thing uh yeah it definitely matters yeah. to a certain sense um it depends I, what you're working on i suppose because i mean in fairness like with the video stuff i mean once you can do the job you can do the job like if you have a good portfolio and you've shown that you've got the results doesn't matter if you're 20 or if you're fucking 40 you know i mean i agree with that yeah, yeah like of course. there's a I think I, I think business people and this is my experience being in the corporate world like they mm. can sniff if you're yeah, of course, if yeah. you're bullshitting yeah, yeah, yeah. so but if you've done stuff before where you can be like I've worked with this client and this client and this mm. client and you're speaking somewhat confidently and you show a good product mm. that's very um, like black and white they're like yeah he, he'll do a good job and a lot of the time it's in my industry anyway it's like if you're turning up for a job you just mm. got to show you're the man like you're telling yeah, people where to go how to shoot stuff um, where how to position themselves and just be confident in what you're doing oh. and that only comes in practice so I definitely recommend lads to like shadow me or Leighton mm. or on a sales call or something to just understand how it goes and then just go out there and just go after it yourself so. yeah that's pretty sick so even if you're doing a like digital marketing or even videography or website design do you think it's important to niche down or being a generalist is okay because I'm kind of feeling that you're kind of going more into event space uh, I'm still quite general. Like you were saying, like you were saying earlier on, it, like can you like you were saying that uh, it's it, it, have you done this before? Ha, like have you touched your space before? And obviously that'll stand with you if you're trying to get a new client. Mm-hmm. Like how important do you think it is to niche down? Uh, short answer is I don't know the answer to that question yeah, at the moment. I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, so true. whether or not you should like completely go down into one niche, for, I don't know, coffee shops or something. Uh, yeah, is it, I don't know. But one thing you could definitely try out, and I was thinking of doing, was like. You, I, you can culminate say all your event videos mm-hmm. run ads on Facebook and Instagram saying how or showing yeah, how sick. you can sell out an event yeah, yeah. and then have it as like a tab on your website definitely or as a landing page that's that people pretty can cool go yeah. to. so someone suggested to me before why don't you set up different landing pages run different ads and see what the which general, one gets the most yeah gets Traffic. the most leads yeah like. cool of course yeah. um Just so yeah A-B testing yeah cool yeah sick man yeah. um you're definitely like a very well networked person and you're really, what age are you again? I'm 21. Yeah, it's 21. 22 in May. So, yeah. like, I mean, in fairness, like, um, as we spoke about earlier on, like, reaching out to people, especially when they're a lot older and you're only in fucking college or you're a teenager or whatever, um, how do you have the confidence to reach out to people? Uh, I especially, d- like, whether, like, you've, you've hung around well with, like, some, our, our, most of Ireland's uh, well respected entrepreneurs and stuff. Like, how do you reach out to them, guys? What way do you, like, how do you value the relationship? Because obviously, when you're young, you don't have too much to offer them. What way do you structure that? Um,. I try and get warm introductions first. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, okay, that's a good tip in fairness. Like, yeah, if, you, if someone yeah. knows somebody, be like, oh, here, this kid, he's doing a good job at the moment. Yeah, cool, sweet. Yeah, okay. and like, I always just try and be really respectful of their time. time. There's a lot of people who just couldn't meet me for whatever reason. Yeah, whatever, They're like yeah. too busy. Um, But I'll generally try and put it as like, meet them on their turf, whereas, wherever is easiest for them. Yeah, so just show up at their office and be like, here, can, you, can I get you a 10 minute, a ten minute coffee or something? Yeah, or your lunch break like or whatever. Yeah, I, like, I know what you mean. Like, Make it as most efficient for them as possible. Yeah. Picking their brain, I find it's way too general because they're like, "What the fuck does that mean?" Uh, but if you're if you're going to someone saying, "I'd like specific advice about um, cash flow," cool, okay, I get you. You know what I mean? I know you're the guy to go to. Yeah, could I have ten minutes of your time? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Keep the email very short and to the point. Yeah, maybe yeah. give a quick brief of who you are because people don't give a shit about reading your email. So mm-hmm. I think it's really respecting their time, not only to be brief in the email, but to be brief in the chat mm-hmm. and to be very specific about the information, information. you want. Don't just show up and be like, uh, 
Yeah. Right, okay. And sure. like, I'm not really going to ask anybody at the end for anything. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to be like, man, it was great to meet you. We'll connect on LinkedIn. Then they're passively probably going to be seeing what I'm doing anyway. So um, that just starts a relationship. And like, you probably don't don't ask them for anything. Like, don't pitch them your app straight after the fucking meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, unless you're going there to pitch them something, that's different. But okay. uh, long term, like you know, always long term. Yeah, always yeah, long term. Sick. Yeah. Do you go to many like networking events or anything? Or do I you, need are to go you to and, more, are I you in any? We had the conversation before. Do you ever? I know we have our LinkedIn group. <laughs> are you in any uh, <laughs> like like LinkedIn group, Facebook groups, or anything, or like you know Meetup.com or something? Uh, no, not really. Nothing like that. Go to no, I've never done any any of it. You're just curious if you ever did. Yeah, no, oh, okay. not really. Um, I'm sort of going through my own network. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of value in that. So, um, but yeah, man, maybe that's an opportunity you haven't looked at yet. Yeah, and that's it, man. Right, what else can we talk about? <laughs> um, these are some really good plugs for ourselves. Uh, um, what's it been like? You know, you've really kicked things off in 2019. How's it been like trying to cope with that scale and in terms of scale? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Try and keep the same like quality. Yeah, your, cool. Okay, cool. What has been like the trickiest? you know, client so far, do you think? Yeah, or industry, maybe? Yeah, per, uh, personally, like, well, in terms of, like, scale and stuff, you sh- I think, like, if you really, really want it, just keep on bashing out the calls and you just take on as much work as possible. Like, even if it is an eight-hour work, we just have to get it done, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if you have four clients and they all have, a, like, content that needs to be distributed between the time of, like, six to seven o'clock and, like, you're struggling to get it done, I mean, you just do it because you just want to get it done, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You just have to have that mindset that's a ton of fucking vision, do you know what I mean? So, over yourself, like, I know you take on, a, you actually do take on a lot of projects at once, in fairness. Well, you did anyway, remember that time? I think it was when we went to Paris, you had a lot of shit going on, didn't you? Yeah, I had all this yeah, stuff you had loads yeah. of stuff. So, like, what's it like for you when you just have loads of shit piled on top of each other? Um, yeah, it it turns into like really bad eating and like long nights. Yeah, um, of course, yeah. That's or like yeah. just or ordering a takeaway and just sitting at the computer. Yeah, yeah I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah, or like trying to like making my work day a bit different so yeah, yeah, i yeah. might get up early and, and yeah and actually your your work time's actually pretty full because you have microsoft so yeah. you're gone from like nine to five uh well like yeah like the, it's flexible so like i could come in at say 10 and leave at six or, oh, yeah, fair. um but yeah just try and like sometimes man i'll sacrifice a bit of economics to just give the work to somebody else yeah of course you yeah. know what i mean so oh, yeah, the, the relationships are there and then whoever you helped out yeah of course yeah. man yeah so just figure out stuff that uh you know works for you and like there's no point i've definitely been at a, at a burnt out place before there's no point taking on so much work that you fucking hate yourself yeah of course man yeah. that's so silly it's not worth it yeah and then right. you thought you, you probably will go into sacrifice and quality uh yeah and sacrificing your mental health which yeah is which worse. is fucking very important yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh have you ever experienced just like a, a stage of like brain fog uh yeah like, yeah, cause def- you, like what you do is v- like it's a very creative like you always need to be thinking creatively like yeah like there's only and there's only so much creative juice you have in a day mm. um so i definitely think two months ago when i was like heavy in work and heavy in freelance that was the worst because like you're you're going into work with like heavy work and you're like falling asleep and shit and it's uh it's hard and you don't really know how to get out of that trap mm. and um work's always in the back of your mind but I just try and scale. Like, I have interns now, so I'm trying to, like, distribute the work a bit better. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, and, yeah, so. Yeah, so in terms of just being productive and stuff and making sure that your workflow is good, do you have, like, a morning routine or... Do you have a morning routine? Uh, sort of, yeah. Like every what time do you wake up at? Uh, I get up around 6. That's pretty early, yeah. yeah. What time do you have to be at, you have to be at Microsoft for, what, 9? Nine? 9-ish, nine yeah, yeah. Depends. So 6 is quite early. What, do you do a workout around? Uh, yeah, so I'll do, say, CrossFit normally in the morning, or if I don't have that, I'll do some form of physical exercise because my attention really goes um if i don't do anything so like even a bit of yoga then i'll drink some water and then uh, i'll just tackle the most creatively challenging things laptop work yeah creatively challenging things so say this morning it was it basically boils down to this it's like creatively challenging edits Mm -hmm. uh planning shoots Mm -hmm. or yeah that's it really those two the afternoon is replying to client emails doing like easy stuff like subtitling videos or making little changes yeah. but the more say this morning it was do one edit for this guy and then plan i have shoot tomorrow on friday so like planning those out in my head and emailing them with the plan um because i found that if i do that in the afternoon like a plan you fucking you forget a life in the plan and then you have to fucking you might have to like rent something or you just forget stuff so i need a clear head yeah, in the morning to really understand what so that means now that tomorrow i have my plan it's already written down it's on my laptop i have it on my phone 
I wake up, get the taxi in, and just bang out the job. So, uh, and for a dude who does have like a very like all your days are pretty high packed. In fairness, like I've seen your schedule, like you're you're always fucking on the go. Like, yeah, how yeah. important is sleep to you? Uh, very important. Sleep is fucking important. Very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I know guys that would do the four hour thing, but like I could not do that. No, I like I need my seven eight. Yeah. Eight and a half. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for real, man. So I'm seven eight during the week. Yeah. So how does that work for you? Half, nine. At the yeah, because if you're up at six, what time do you go to sleep at? Like at like eleven. Yeah. yeah so yes. always. Yeah. Well, like no messing about. If it's a little bit later, I'll probably sleep in a little bit later. But uh, yeah, sleep um, is really important. So. In terms of like, do you think I've been alright? Yeah. Yeah, sick. Do you think uh, how important do you think environment is for Who success? You yeah. With? Yeah, like like in college, like if like if you're hanging around with like ten lads that are doing well, do you think you're going to be the eleventh guy to do well? Uh, yeah, like I've only. I don't think I've I've only ever been in those environments, so yeah, I'm not yeah, really. Cool. Used yeah, you've to never. You feel like you've never really had anyone holding you back. Not really. Cool, yeah, yeah that's I've, cool. I've been around lads who like. I think it's nice to have a, a dose of people who are more chill. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Um, that's cool. But I've never been around like an unambitious group of people. I don't think. So, yeah, that's no, pretty sick. Yeah, uh, I'm not used to the alternative. But yeah, yeah I think it's important. It man. is extremely important because you can see lads that like have like a lot of potential and a lot of. Like a lot of passion and strive for something, even especially you see it a lot in sports, like lads that are like really good football players from like fourteen to sixteen mm. and then they start like just messing around, fucking going out drinking, all that bad stuff and then What happens to your life? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like you know millions of lads football like football's a big one because like everyone starts off at it and then you can see who's doing good. And the lads who do good they just never really break into that scene. Yeah. And it's it's very clear that it's usually is just down to who they were hanging around with in school. Yeah. Yeah, so I suppose it is pretty crucial to that uh, five people thing is quite true. I show think. me your friends, show me your future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is, like I mean, not that like, like we're only twenty, but like I mean, I mean it kind of you can see how it plays out even yeah. at a small scale. Like even even your teenage years, you can see how much it scales out. Yeah, so it's careful. You have it's to be hard careful. To, I think it's hard to judge when our age as well. Though. Yeah, I it is. Like, we don't like, we don't know fucking anything. Like, no. when we we're thirty, I think we we'll look back, back at it again and we'll be, be like, like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. so it's hard. To be honest, I find it hard to like know at the moment how. Look, I wouldn't be hanging around people who are dragging me down anyway, mm-hmm. but it's hard to know now, like, how what groups we're in and stuff, how yeah. how we're going to be in three, four years. So, um, so yeah. but man, stuff changes really quick. Like, you know. But now, how important has mentorship been to you? Ah, very good. So, Jamie Weiss uh, has dog, been the, the single biggest uh, business influence for yeah. me. Like, I, I met him 2017 oh, yeah? when he was looking for a personal videographer. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, not even out of like, not even out of, I need to do this every two months. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, every two or three months, I'm always checking in with them with some form of like uh, mentorship wanted. And he just gives me some non bullshit, like yeah, yeah, yeah. real, real world advice specific to my situation. So if you know anybody in your network, for anybody watching this, if you know anybody who is sort of s- successful in the space, reach out to them because they'll give you non-bullshit yeah. advice like i think it's important to have somebody like at least like like eight nine ten years ahead of you that like just know that's done it and knows what they're doing and can just give you any advice they can like yeah it's the best way to be yeah because like mean, you, you, they're the, genuinely the best person to learn off like like really like i mean who, who else is going to give you the best information besides someone who's done it like yeah you can go to all that even your parents like your lectures you can ask them all the questions you want but like they don't really have that real insight do they yeah you and like your situation is although there are things that are you know, uniform across the board, like working hard it's and making sure networking. Like there are little nuanced points little that are so that are going to be lost in the you know, lo- excuse me, lost in translation if you don't actually ask someone who's been in your position. So, yeah. um, we have a lot of insight from college and sort of that new new venture space when you're a young lads, mm-hmm. um, and there's a lot of value to be learned from that. So, love you all. Right, appreciate you guys for watching it. Um, a lot of you will be my friends that are watching this, so please do go ahead over to Thomas's channel and subscribe. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a bit of value out of it. That's the main thing. Um, most of the channel is going to be just me talking shit about marketing and stuff to kind of pro- to promote the business and give value to people, small businesses and people. But um, I definitely want to touch into the entrepreneur space and help out people that are kind of our age in their 20s and just want to get a move and maybe college wasn't for them or whatever. So, yeah, reach out if you need a hand or whatever. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you watching. Cool,